Hello, I'm David Epworth, and this is my new book, or a proof of my new book, Overpaid, Oversexed, and Over There. It's about British acts in the United States from 1963 to 1983. As you'll appreciate, usually when you've got a new book out, it's customary to go and talk at literary festivals or maybe in bookshops to meet readers, sign copies, and so forth. As you'll appreciate, that's pretty difficult in the current situation and so what I hope to do as a bit of a substitute is using the miracle of this platform to do a series of stories, observations, vignettes about the period covered by the book and also offer those people who want it the opportunity to get a signed copy. Uh, more details of that later on. First, on with the show. <laughs> It's possible to argue that uh, after musical talent, the single most important thing in popular music, the single most important factor for popular music success is the right hair. You may laugh, but Elvis Presley worked on the hair of Elvis Presley long before he worked on the music of Elvis Presley. And he was defined by the way he wore his hair which, as you can see, is slick, swept back, regular, polished, sophisticated. And that was the prevailing look of all pop star haircuts until the Beatles came along in February 1964 and arrived in America. And it seemed that half of the newsprint that was devoted to the Beatles at that time was devoted to the subject of their exceptional, astonishing hair which, of course, the American media describes as being very long hair. It wasn't particularly long hair, but it was hair that was seeking to do something different. It was hair that was seeking to achieve a different kind of shape. It was hair that was, compared to American hair, very unkempt, because American hair had always been controlled at all costs. That was felt very important, that it should be held down, it should be maintained in its place. And as many people, including Bruce Springsteen, recall of the time, the wrong kind of hair, the wrong length of hair in the United States at that time could seriously get you into fights. And so the Beatles' look when it came along was revolutionary. And when the Beatles' Hard Day's Night appeared in American movie theatres, from the middle of 1964. Finally, Beatles fans of the States got the opportunity to look at the Beatles, not in a small screen of a television, but on a large, on a large screen, 60 feet high. They could examine every detail of the appearance of their beloved. And the thing that they focused on, probably more than anything else, was the hair. And this was probably the greatest advertisement for a particular hairstyle uh, the fringe, or as the Americans call it, bangs, that we've ever seen, we ever saw in the 20th century. The interesting thing is that when the Beatles sang She Loves You or Twist and Shout, the screams rose to a pitch when Paul and George moved in on one shared microphone and joined in on some vocal punctuation. And as they did so, they shook their heads and as they did so, their hair was seen to do something that nobody had ever seen happen in American pop music before. Their hair was seen to move. And it wasn't the last thing that moved. If you've ordered my book, either online or via your local bookshop, please get in touch with me via the email underneath this and send me your address and I'll be happy to send you a signed, customised book plate that you can put inside it. Thanks very much.